Ladies and gentlemen, this man represents a company that needs no introduction. So, well, please welcome from Saffron Brand Consultants Madrid. He is the one and only Fernando Otis Amen. So, after that introduction, um, are you still awake? Yeah. I guess you are. Um, they changed several times my speaking slot. Um, <laughs> And then it turned out to be finally after lunch. And I was thinking, Srinivasan, is there any reason for that? <laughs> Maybe it's because I start dancing or something. He thought that I would do so. But no, it's actually not the case. So first of all, thanks so much for having me. It's really an honor. And I'm very thankful for this opportunity. Um, and I was really impressed. Just that I was really impressed I, by uh, Mr. Khan, King Khan, you call him, right? Your Bollywood, Hollywood star. Uh, apart that he is an amazing charismatic figure, the guy, more than anything, he knew a lot about brands and branding. It came a stage where I was like, hey, stop talking and start dancing because um, we are supposed to talk here about branding, not you. So more on Mr. Khan a little bit later. But actually, what are we doing today? What's my purpose here? Well, Cindy pretty much very much introduced it very, very well. Um, I'm going to be speaking from the branding side of things, from the branding industry. And we'll go a little bit in detail what we actually mean by brands and branding so that you all understand what I'm referring to. Uh, and how these times of change, of constant uh, change of constant beta, as the software industry would call it, this continuous beta stage we're in, how that's actually affecting brands and building a brand and sustaining brands over time. So actually, just a little bit about us before. Um, really, the name Saffron has nothing to do with the sponsor of this speech, OK? It's just a total uh, coincidence. The uh, reason why we're called Saffron is because usually with Saffron, which in many countries, most countries, something very expensive, uh, very small, you can do fantastic things. I actually come from Madrid, from Spain. So actually, saffron is the main ingredient to do our national dish, which is the paella, a fantastic thing. Uh, we were actually founded 15 years ago by both these gentlemen, both uh, Jacob Bembunan and also Wally Ollins. And actually, I wanted to dedicate one specific slide to Wally Ollins, who actually passed away last year. Reason for this, and it's probably also the reason that I'm actually here today is because Wally Ollins had a love affair with your country, with your beautiful country. He actually, yes, please, please an applause for him up there. And I think for the colleagues here in the advertising industry, he was actually one of the pioneers of the advertising industry in this country. He actually came in the 1960s to found Benson, the British uh, UK advertising firm. And since then, it's been really a love affair. And we've been uh, doing fantastic work here in India, thanks to him. Um, so actually, what's our uh, mission? What do we do? And I'm getting a little bit into the world of branding here. Uh, we definitely think that branding is a mixture between IQ and EQ. So the IQ, definitely know that, right? It's all this rigorness, the data, the analysis. But for branding, there's also an important part, which is the emotional side of things. That's what we call the EQ, which is the judgments, is the insights you get from the analysis. And the idea to actually create good brands or fantastic brands or make them evolve over time is actually finding that combination, that mixture of both. So we are one company that doesn't mean that we have uh, many locations worldwide, but more importantly, we work all over the world. So today I'm in, in India, uh, tomorrow I can be in Germany. Well, I have colleagues right now working uh, for the brand strategy of YouTube in San Francisco. So we work for major brands worldwide, ranging from the chemicals industry uh, to the electronics high-tech industry, to the fashion industry, uh, to the retail industry, financial services, and last but not least, especially I enjoyed very much just today the speech of Mr. Kant. We also have done a lot of work in destination branding, not just for cities of London or other countries, but also specifically in India, where we uh, infuse an own identity for the Bengal state. So having said this, and again, I was not trying to sell you here my company. I was just trying to get you a little bit into context, is what is actually a brand, right? Or how do we see what a brand is? Because I mean, frankly, it's really been a word that has been also very much bastardized over the past decades. For, so what is a brand for us? And this will be important for afterwards explaining what I'm actually here for. Well, brand is not a logo. It's much more than a logo. It's not a tagline. We pretty much leave that generally for the colleagues in the advertising um, sector. 
it's definitely not marketing. Marketing is a huge universe, and branding is part of that universe that marketing is. Brand or branding is what you stand for. It's this promise that you need to deliver. And Mr. Puri, in the previous presentation, when he spoke about the fantastic work they're doing for the brands at ITC, he very much pointed this out. You might remember, he spoke about this idea that you need to have all the infrastructure, all the research, everything behind to actually really come up with a brand that's really going to have some effect in the marketplace. So it's really this idea of delivering on a promise. Um, this is actually interesting insight. What, what comes to your mind when I show you this? Doctors, maybe, right? Some blood. Um, unfortunately, war. Uh, people in need. Um, what happens when I show you this? Chocolate. Expensive watches. Beautiful mountains. Ski resorts. OK, so this is a good example of actually what branding can do. We've pretty much just switched the colors, but every meaning that is behind totally changes. It's not a beauty contest. It's about clarity. It's about what's your story, what you believe in. It's about your personality, what you're there. It's actually your culture, how you want to behave. So branding is much more than just what you see on the label of a product you find in the supermarket. It's about expressing what makes you unique. Um, fantastic example from our friend uh, Branson with Virgin. You know, this idea of personality, that's what makes him unique. No one else in the world can actually do this. It's about belonging or that other people see you that you belong to something. Look at this gentleman, right? This guy is probably living somewhere in the American Midwest. Uh, he's, yeah, what do we say here? 43 year olds, probably sitting in an office as an accountant during the week from Monday to Fridays. But then on Fridays, you know what? I'm going to put that leather jacket on and I'm just going to sit on my chopper and drive away and scare little kids off the road. And I'm going to be the man, right? That's what branding is about. And that's what the fantastic job Harley Davidson has made to really build this aura, this world around what actually they are. Because they're not much more than just a motorcycle, but actually they are much more than that. So finally, branding is expressing an idea, a concrete idea, and you're going to live by that idea. And all your actions, all your expressions of what you're going to do are going to have this idea in mind. Perfect example, Nike. You can do whatever you want with Nike. You can wear their shoes. You can go to their stores. You can even go to an event where you're going to have athletes. But it's always going to be about winning. That's their central idea. Take IKEA, right? the furniture. It's about democratizing design. That's what their idea is. And they execute this no matter where in the world in a very cohesive manner. Last but not least, very importantly, branding, and sometimes we forget about this, is a management tool that allows you to make decisions. I know the case of Apple is actually very often used a little bit too much, but it's fantastic for this occasion because the brand itself has allowed them to develop products, services, experiences, and environments. And actually, because of the brand, because it's a management tool, it actually allows them to think and expand it and make it much more elastic and maybe, who knows, going into cars. So you're going to say, what core competency does Apple have in building cars? Well, that core competency that allows them to actually maybe develop cars in the future is actually their brand. This is our ultimate example of what branding is. This is actually probably uh, not in advertising um, that doesn't even really talk about the products or what they do. It just simply says, designed by Apple in California. But you get the idea. That's the important thing. They've gotten to the ultimate point where they don't even have to say anything more. So in sum, uh, branding, what you do is when you start with the X, it's someone who doesn't know the brand. Uh, we move. Uh, to the right, that's our work and our function, what we do on an everyday basis. We have people knowing the brand, which is the check mark. From there, we have them liking the brand. More importantly, from liking the brand is loving the brand, going to the heart. And ultimately, the idea of this is that that's going to bring the revenue and the profits for those specific brands. So having given you this context about what is branding, what a brand actually is, what has changed? I'm getting into now into the world of disruption, 
right? We heard so much. We should have made the count since yesterday. How many times have, has the word come up? It would have been amazing. It would have been actually a very interesting thing to do. So what has changed? Well, obviously, the digital world very much has influenced this with all the um, technology coming with it. Um, and we see pre pretty much three major shifts that have happened thanks to the technology and to the advent of the digital world. One is the revolution of more, the abundance of everything. You have pretty much more of everything. You have more people in the world. You have more cities. You have more companies. At the end of the day, ultimately, what this means is you have more choice. The second one is about mobility. The United Nations estimates that over the past year, there's been an increase by 37% of people who don't live anymore in their home countries. And I'm not referring specifically now to refugees. Um, this is amazing. Um, and actually, where you can see it, really, is if you spend some time in the Dubai airport at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. So everything moves from one place to the other. There's nothing static anymore. What is home nowadays has become something totally relative. So home is anywhere. It's everywhere. And this also at an increasing speed and volume. Last but not least, the previous two trends have actually caused this, this revolution of mentality, the me revolution. Who doesn't remember the Arab Spring we went through a few years ago where Twitter pretty much wrote, uh, uh, brought down dictators? So everyone now is empowered or feels empowered, right? Has the cell phone in their hand and feels empowered to really be part of it. I can choose, I can decide, and my vote and my voice will count. So all of this brings us to disruption. Now, Disruption is actually nothing new. I mean, we talk about it all the time now. But for God's sake, you know, when we went from horses to cars, that was a disruption. Or when actually thousands of years ago, millions of years ago, we invented the fire, um, some extent we found fire, that was also a disruption. So what has changed also from that sort of disruption, and not so far away, maybe 10 years ago, to the disruption is now, is that is what's called now the Big Bang disruption. That is, disruption happens overnight. It comes from left and right. And the, the worst thing of it, of it all, you can't prevent it. It's just there. And once it's there, there's nothing you can do anymore about it. Examples, well, I guess the ones you already know. In the hotel industry, you have Airbnb. Uh, music, once again, revolutionized or disrupted by Spotify. And obviously, the most famous case nowadays is the one introduced by Uber in the services of movement. Not only there, you have other industries, for instance, in the travel industry, how the internet has very much revolutionized it and has disrupted it. So pretty much today, everything is being disrupted, is disrupting, if you're on the active end of the things, or is being disrupted if you're on the passive side of things. So you're either ahead of the curve or behind the curve. So, the flavor of the day, and I think we've had it for the past two days, is I got news for you. It is disruption, <laughs> right? Well, well, I'll give you some amazing examples coming now on how far it can get with a disruption. You're going to have a laugh. Um, but actually, why has it become so important, this idea of disruption for brands? Well, we see it pretty much almost every day that we have companies coming to us and say, you know what? We have a problem. OK, what's your problem? I assume it's something related to branding. Otherwise, you wouldn't be sitting in front of us. Well, we just need something new. We need to change. Well, what do you mean you need to change? You need something new. Well, it's just we feel we're going to be disrupted. OK, so this buzzword of disruption has become so generic that everyone is just scared of just being disrupted for the sake of being disrupted. And that gives us some examples of things that are coming up. Uh, I don't know if someone of you works for Coca-Cola, so don't take it personal here. But is there really a need for Coca-Cola Live? Well, I assume with all the market research Coca-Cola does and all the insights they have into their markets, maybe they found it, it needs to be. I don't know. I personally kind of doubt it. But wait, this is going to get a little bit better now. Did you know that the towel got disrupted? Finally, there's an electric towel that we can use. Did not know that. Good news. How about this? Death is being disrupted. You can now customize your tombstones. Oh, that's disruption too, right? Disrupting death. What about this one now? You can disrupt now your sleep. 
because now in the marketplace you can buy these fantastic linens for 100 US dollars and that's going to disrupt the way you sleep. Okay. Okay, well, it seems disruption is everywhere. Okay. So, bottom line is that disruption has very much become a bastardized word. It has become something that, frankly, I don't know to which extent, it's something useful to all of you. What, what can you do with this concept of disruption? I want to disrupt. I'm going to get disrupted. No, we have to disrupt. So it's this idea of, oh, I need to disrupt because I don't want to be old just for the sake of it. I want to change just for the sake of changing, not to be seen behind or being old. Definitely all this in times of unprecedented uncertainty. Um, lots has been talked about times we live in. And this is an interesting fact that we always kind of think about it. If you think about the Fortune 500 companies that are today on the list, um, only just above 12% of them that are currently on the list are the ones who were in the 1950s. So imagine where all the other companies are. Well, definitely not more than Fortune 500, and many of them actually don't even exist anymore. So the idea with all this change happening, this continuous beta we live in, that is everything is changing all the time, there's no solid ground anymore to really build the basis to build solid brands on top of it. And I definitely we used this image of Coca-Cola on purpose because it's a fantastic example on how a beautiful brand has really been able to build over decades and decades based on a much more solid environment. So nowadays, that's different, right? As we mentioned, if you're going to disrupt, if you're not going to disrupt, someone else will disrupt you, right? As Steve Jobs taught us. Um, otherwise, tell it to the folks at Nokia what happened with them. Well, we know what happened to them. But there's also a positive spin to this. As uh, Schumpeter already, uh, the economist in the first half of the 20th century, uh, taught us. Uh, he talked actually about creative destruction. That is, you need to destroy something in order actually to build something new. To some extent, you can align it with a creative uh, disruption. Many companies are actually doing that. We have a good example, actually, uh, uh, amazing huge bank that is a client of ours. It's BBVA from Spain, uh, huge in Spain, also in Latin America. They're not only thinking about doing disruption and going digital, but they're actually breaking down their entire business model, their structures and their processes to really make it into the digital world. Um, maybe from the world I used to be in, which is from the luxury industry, Burberry is a good example. I mean, we all know how Burberry was. It was a bit of an old-fashioned, a little bit gray luxury brand. And they saw the opportunity with the digital world to really, to some extent, disrupt or really change in a relevant manner their positioning within their industry. And nowadays, if you look at them, they are really the leaders of everything that has to do digital. And that has pretty much brought them back to being one of the leaders in the luxury industry. So long story short, um, you need to change in order to still be the same. Uh, and there is a specific reason why I have Madonna here. Although after the amazing performance of Mr. Khan yesterday, I could have put also his picture here. But there is a reason why we have Madonna on this slide. Do you guys remember Madonna, the first songs from Madonna? You know, like, like a virgin or living on a prayer and all these, the 1980s? Does, do those anything have to do with what she sings nowadays? It's amazing how this lady has reinvented herself over and over again. She started with pop, then she went into electronica, then she dance music. What's going to be the next thing? Is she going to do something that has to do with her? So the bottom line here is that she saw that the ground she was standing on was constantly moving. Either she moved with it or she would fall down. And I think Mr. Khan actually was referring to this also yesterday, how much he reinvented himself. So, having said this, um, all this shaky ground, what does that mean for a brand? What is still the function and the reason why brands exist? What happens to a brand in such an environment now that everything changes? Well, historically, um, or up till now, how did you develop a brand? How do we do it? What do we do on a daily basis? Well, you can read many of Wally Olin's books, 
or of any of the other ones in the industry, and they will pretty much tell you the same thing, that you needed to have a foundation to really build the solid ground upon which you could then develop everything that had to relate with the brand. So this idea of anchoring an idea, this uniqueness and this differentiation of your brand was super important for the success of this brand. Well, that is kind of not the case anymore, right? Um, you know, Moises Naim in his book, End of Power, pretty much talks about it, that power is not so static anymore. Power comes and power goes in a much more dynamic way because of it, because of this uncertainty and everything that surrounds it. So it's a bit counterintuitive that we build brands basing it that everything is static when everything actually is not static anymore, which means that being anchored is actually being left behind. That's the idea nowadays that everyone has, that everyone fears to be anchored because it's not flexible enough, doesn't let you move. So that is when we come in, in the thought, in the industry, and we say, well, maybe it's also time for ourselves to think about disrupting us. That is, maybe we have to disrupt, or maybe we have to see how we have to change the way we build brands, the methodology that goes to it. Is it too passive what we're doing? Is it too static? Um, is it too anchoring, as I mentioned before? Because um, when we do a, a brand development project, this is not something that takes two weeks, a month, or three months. I mean, there have been cases that maybe from the first meeting you have with the client to really executing the brand expression, the brand engagement programs, everything surrounding it might take almost between one to two years. Well, nowadays, two years, I mean, it's an amazing long time. Where were you three months ago? What are you going to do in six months from now? Probably it might be totally different than what you're doing now. So imagine two years or one year even. So you develop all this brand, and maybe in one year, nothing has to do anything with it. It's not meaningful anymore. It's not relevant anymore because everything has changed. So it might have to be quicker. And actually, an example we have that brands are being revisited much more often nowadays than they used to is the case of Microsoft. I mean, back several decades ago, a brand would be revisited, would be changed, would be uh, modified maybe every 10 years, every 15 years, every five years. Well, Microsoft, uh, if you see how they have changed their identities over time, that was 2005, that's 2007, 2008 again, 2012 a totally new uh, product landscape, 2013 a, a new visual identity, that continues 2014, and that's Windows 10 that we're having now. So pretty much they're touching on the brand or on some uh, vector of the brand pretty much every year nowadays. So long are the days gone where we would touch and modify a brand element every five to ten years. So does it then mean that brands are becoming meaningless, as some authors would argue? Well, we definitely don't think so. We agree with these two authors from uh, the article in Harvard Business Review that brands still matter immensely, actually more than ever now. Um, this morning we heard about this idea that there is a clear leader in the internet world. Um, but it's still a brand. You're still choosing Google over Bing. Does Google have a better technology than Bing? Well, some who might be technology experts probably will tell you it's not the case, but you're still choosing Google. So it's not about uh, the brand itself that is becoming um, meaningless. It's the way we actually build those brands. So the brand is becoming too static, and we need to make it more dynamic. In this dynamic context, context or what I was referring to previously as the continuous beta, um, that's what actually leads us to this disruption. And if you think about it, disruption is not a bad thing. Disruption is actually an extremely good thing to happen. Because if you really think about what's behind disruption, why disruption actually happens, is because uh, something uh, has become irrelevant. And disruption, what it's making, is causing, again, this balance to make it relevant. Who remembers the Walkman, right? At some point, uh, when something is being disrupted is because that product or that service is not relevant anymore to actually the people who use it. Take, for instance, banks. Um, we know that banks are 
getting into uh, many different uh, schemes, fraud schemes. We've had many cases in Europe now. So the bottom line is that uh, banks are not anymore aligned with what people actually need. They're not relevant anymore, their products and their services. And this is the reason why you have so many startups trying to disrupt the financial services industry. Right? This is the classical indicator. If you see those little startups surrounding and growing around you as a company, well, you have a problem because something you're doing is not relevant anymore to the people you're trying to cater to. So when a product comes out uh, that is new, it's not disrupted. It's actually um, a product or service that is relevant that needs to be disrupted. Disruption is not the change itself. Change, you don't have to change just for the sake of changing it. It is a relevant change. And I'm repeating over and over again this idea, this word of relevance to it. Because you, just for the sake of changing, you don't need just to change everything. The Mini is a good example. Surely it has changed. There have been some adaptations since its launch in the 1960s. But the core idea of the Mini is still the same. So just the sake of changing is not just going to do it. There needs to be a relevant change. It needs to be relevant. Uh, another graphical way to put it is that there needs to be an alignment between what you do, be it a company or an organization, and actually uh, what people want. And uh, we talked a little bit early on, um, and I think it was in Paul's speech, you know, all this idea of uh, social media, how actually it delivers on this. This idea that uh, you're addressing really what people need. Maybe they're not telling you that. That's the big quest, the big challenge that you, you will need to find that out for you. But the question is, is it aligned between uh, what you're doing and what the people want? Is it relevant for those people what you're doing? So the role of brand today and in the future is or continues to be helping brands be relevant, relevant for their target audiences, relevant for the people in the societies we live in. It's this idea of combining still having this vision of what they are, their identity, this authenticity with relevance. And that mix between the two is actually uh, the formula for success for the, the brand. And that's what's going to allow you to change it over time without really affecting the success of the business. Um, just to finish off, and um, we don't have the solution to this yet. Uh, this is where branding is going, is this idea of that we have to create what at this stage we call the necessary and sufficient backbone in a brand's continuous process of transformation because now it's just transforming itself over and over. But at the same time, it needs to be made in a way that it allows companies still to move in a very fluid, seamless way. And at the same time, maintaining their identity. So, what we're advocating for is that we need to find new methodologies, new systems that allow us to create brands in a much more um, organic, dynamic way. So we think some of us have actually finished our presentations by giving you some basic thoughts for Monday morning. My three are the following ones. Um, I think it's going to be much more actionable for most of you to think about relevance instead of disruption, because disruption is not meaning anything anymore to you. Think about relevance, because if you think about relevance, disruption will come from by itself. Second, brand matters more than ever. And last but not least, um, it's coming what we call the advent of fluid branding. Thank you very much. <laughs>